So in 2021, Adidas actually brought back the Pure Boost line and had the Pure Boost 21, which I did a review on my channel and you guys can go check that out. But this was the previous year's version and now we have a new version that it popped up on their site that I didn't know was actually coming through. And this is a look at the Pure Boost 2022. And you could see the upgrades to this thing look pretty cool. The midsole looks really, really bulbous on the back. Lots more cushioning on here. But I wanted to let you guys know what I think about the Pure Boost 22. There's some things that I really like on here. There's a couple things that I don't like. So let's go ahead and get into this video. What's going on guys, Hess here. Hopefully you're having a good day out there. If you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you guys wanna check out my website, Collective Kicks, I post a bunch of sneaker deals for you guys over there on a regular basis. The Pure Boost 22 comes in at $140 and the fit is true to size in my opinion. Now, if you're more interested in the previous version, this one is deep discounted, like $78 or something like that right now. Very affordable option if you're looking for a nice comfortable sneaker that doesn't have a lot of hype behind it. Anyway, the Pure Boost line has had another facelift. So the original Pure Boost, came out actually before the Ultra Boost did. And I don't know what was in that midsole, but it was so soft and squishy. It was the very first taste of Adidas Boost for me and it was sold every sense. Then you fast forward to this version and it was pretty good. Like it's not the same as the old ones. Something about the old ones had like more squish in the midsole, but honestly it was a pretty good shoe uh, nonetheless. And now we have the latest and greatest uh, Pure Boost 22. And obviously they changed a couple things massively. The upper looks primarily the same. There's a little bit of adjustments uh, here and there from the eyelets and the heel scoop in the back actually goes up a lot higher. But the midsole is where they change this up a ton. You could see they went and did a huge stack of boost on the back. And there is a little bit of a toe up in the front. So it kind of has more of a smoother heel toe transition. But the back of this thing is crazy. Look at how ridiculous that stack of boost is. Now, the other thing is if you look real closely, this isn't regular boost. This is actually Jet Boost, which is smaller TPU pellets than the original recipe for Adidas Boost, which is an interesting move. I didn't know that they were gonna be moving over to Jet Boost. From the pictures of the description, I honestly really couldn't tell, but I'll get into the description in a second. So Jet Boost is actually a little bit firmer to the touch, like in my opinion. So I wanted to bring out the durometer and see here. The Jet Boost comes in around a 33 and this one comes in around a 31. So it's a little bit firmer than the regular Boost, but honestly, it's not anything crazy noticeable on feet because when you put them on feet, obviously there's more Jet Boost here. So when you squish down, that does feel a little bit more cushioning on this version than the previous, even though the material is a little bit firmer, but the stack is higher. And so it's definitely noticeable to myself when I try them on side by side that this one feels like more cushiony. Anyways, let's get into some words of what Adidas says about the product. Daily running shoes made in part with recycled materials. You don't have to run far to feel the benefits of training. Slip on these Adidas Boost shoes and you're only a few miles away from a good mood. They're designed for short runs with a boost midsole that offers incredible energy return in every step. The stretch web outsole flexes naturally for an energized ride and continental rubber gives you superior traction. It says it has an extra heel counter that locks down the foot for a secure fit. Pure Boost is a training shoe designed for short distances and everyday use. Upper contains a minimum of 50% recycled content. So it actually didn't say anything about the shoes being Jet Boost. However, on the box, it does say Pure Boost Jet. And then when you get them in hand, you can notice that the smaller pellets are definitely like Jet Boost. And Jet Boost has been in about three different models that I've reviewed recently on my channel. So if you wanna check out some of those other videos, I'll try to link them in the description of the video. But the difference between regular Boost and Jet Boost, honestly, it just feels a little bit firmer. It's kind of like an in-between of Adidas Bounce and Adidas Boost. In my opinion, like Adidas Boost is softer and squishier, but has nice little like spring back. Adidas Bounce is a lot firmer, but the Jet Boost is kind of in between. It's a little bit firmer than Boost and it does have a nice little snapback, but to the touch, it doesn't seem as soft as Adidas Boost. But again, once you put them on because of the stack of Jet Boost, it's definitely noticeable. But overall comfort of the shoe, I'd give it probably a seven or a seven and a half out of 10. There's so many good technologies out there and there's so many good comfortable shoes out there that this isn't on top of my list. But if you have a really firm pair of sneakers and you want something that has some nice cushioning and something you can use every day, like you put this shoe on versus is like an old retro or something like that. This is obviously heaven on your feet comparison to that. However, if you put this on next to something like the Adidas Ultra Boost or something, I would definitely personally just choose an Ultra Boost over these, but that's just my two cents. The one thing I did not like about the shoe out of everything is the tongue. It's a simple fix, but they need to sew down the tongue at least halfway up because the tongue is stitched on the bottom, but it's loose all the way up the sides. So there's definitely some tongue folding that happens when you're putting on the shoe. And that's kind of like one of those nuisance things when you're putting on a shoe and the tongue folds over at the base. And then the whole thing is like just a little bit off because of that. And you don't notice it right away sometimes. Sometimes you do. 
This is one where I definitely noticed and I was like, oh man, I gotta fix the tongue. Once you fix the tongue, the lockdown is fine. It's just a small nuisance that could be easily fixed if they had some stitching up the sides to hold the bottom part of the tongue in place. But I do like that it's a detached tongue because of that, you can see how wide of an opening this is. So if you have a wide foot at the, the top like I do, then it's easier just to slide in and you have a lot of wiggle room up there, which is something that I prefer. The upper is decent. It's half recycled materials, as I said. There's a lot of perforation and ventilation holes through the toe. And the material all the way around the sides are actually really breathable. The inside liner is nice and you have a fused material back here for the heel cup of the shoe. Overall, I think the style and the look of the shoe looks great. I do want to see other colorways of the shoe though, because I just got basically an all white version, which is okay. But honestly, you could do some really cool things with the color blockings on this shoe with the different colors of the fuse material and the liners and the eyelets on the shoe as well which are like a tpu or plastic but all in all i'd say that the shoe is above average for comfort it's not the best on the market but the price point being 140 dollars it makes it a nice option for somebody that doesn't want to pay all the way up to an ultra use it's like 200 dollars or something like that i would say overall it's a great product uh, for the difference in price though, honestly, for 70 bucks or something like that, I would definitely get this over the other version only because obviously it's a different midsole and a different experience on your feet, but it's an overall pretty comfortable shoe for, again, a really discounted price. So uh, if you want the latest and greatest with the different midsole or you already had the previous version, then this is a great option, obviously, for the price point. However, if you're looking for a cost savings, then this is definitely a, a nice little option. And I'll link both of them in the description. It'll take you over to Adidas page. And if you guys wanna buy them and you guys use my link, I do get a small kickback, which is always appreciated when you guys use my affiliate link. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was informative, but leave a comment. Have you tried the Pure Boost 21 or 22? What did you guys think? Leave an honest comment in the comment section. Appreciate it when you guys do that and let other people see it. But have a good one. Hopefully we'll see you back for some more sneaker videos soon. All right, peace guys.